There are fish in the aquarium hobby that are quintessential favorites, like angelfish, guppies, and the antetras. While these fish are very much loved, there are plenty of other fish in the hobby that are underappreciated and deserve our attention. So I decided to put out a poll to my fellow fish keepers to see what they thought were the most underrated fish. So based on the poll, as well as my own thoughts, I compiled the list of what I thought were the most underrated fish in the aquarium hobby. I would urge you to watch this video to the end, since the poll did generate some pretty interesting fish suggestions that I think are worth discussing. So let's go ahead and get started with the list. So let's start off with the Zebra Daniel. This is probably one of the most affordable and hardy fish in the aquarium hobby. You can usually pick this fish up at your big box or local fish store for about a dollar or two. These fish are often overlooked due to their low price point and their consideration as a beginner fish due to their hardiness. I think what happens is that once people get some experience in the aquarium hobby, they think they're almost too good for this fish and move on to some other fish that they find more difficult. But I personally think that this fish is still striking and is a great addition to your planted community aquarium. So let's talk about another favorite of mine, rainbow fish. You can find rainbow fish in a wide variety of sizes from the more nano Pseudomagill species to the larger Melanotania species, which require a four foot tank. Unfortunately, most rainbow fish are sold as juveniles, which at which point they're just silver fish. Also, rainbow fish can be a bit pricey compared to a lot of cheaper schooling fish options like most of your tetras and barbs, which can turn people off to them since they think they're just buying a silver expensive fish. I want to let you in on a little secret. Once you get the rainbow fish growing and we have them reach adulthood, they're absolutely stunning. So let's talk about one of the most misunderstood fish in the aquarium hobby, the barb. These fish get a bad rap due to one member of their species, the tiger barb, which is a notoriously aggressive fin nipping fish. However, the majority of barbs are actually not that aggressive. You just have to keep in mind to keep them in a large group with an odd number of fish, which allows them to establish a pecking order, much like many of the African cichlids. I currently keep this breeding group of Odessa barbs in this 29 gallon tank and I've had no problems with aggression. So if you do wanna learn more about barbs, check out the link to this video above where you can learn a lot more. So let's talk about another fish that we should keep more in the hobby and that's the killifish. These fish come in a wide variety of colors and it really does surprise me that we don't see more of them in the mainstream aquarium hobby. There are some species that we see quite often like the golden wonder killie and the clown killie but there are also tons of other beautiful killifish that make great tank mates in your community aquarium. I think killifish get a bad rap as being short-lived. Yes, there are annual killie species, which don't live much more than a year, but there are plenty of other killie species out there that are much more long-lived and will give you enjoyment either in your species only or community aquarium. So let's talk about another fish that has a very similar reputation as the zebra Danielle, and that's the white cloud mountain minnow. These fish are extremely hardy, extremely inexpensive, but also very colorful, coming in a wide variety of morphs from gold forms to long fins. Much like the zebra Daniels, these come to be considered beginner fish and also have a very low price point, which devalues them in the mind of many fish keepers. But in my opinion, these fish are beautiful and also great pond fish because they can handle a wide variety of temperatures outside the range that most of your community type fish could handle. So we can't have a fish barn video without talking about live bears. And I have two species of live bears that come to mind when thinking about underrated fish. And those are limias and gudeans. There are some really striking species of limias out there, but species with tiger stripes and also species that have beautiful speckled sheens. 
Well, there are a lot of Gadean species that are more muted in color. There are definitely a few species that should be more prevalent in the hobby. So let's take a look at a few that I personally find stunning and should appear more often in your local fish store. So as I said in the open of this video, I do want to talk about some of the comments from the poll. So I do want to address this first one from Paul, which says, Corey's, most people think of them as janitors. So I can definitely see Paul's point, where a lot of people are purchasing them just to keep the bottom of their tank clean, and not appreciating them. But I think there's another side to Cory Doris as well. At least in my local club, there are a lot of people breeding them and they actually do fetch a pretty decent price at a lot of the auctions. So I kind of decided to put Cory Cats. That's kind of an honorable mention here. But I think it really depends with the crowd that you run with and the Aquarius that you hang out with as to whether you would put these on a list as underappreciated or you think that they get the respect they deserve. So another comment we got here from Jeff talking about discus and that nobody talks about them on forums because hardly anyone keeps them. And I think this is another situation where it's kind of relative to your own fish keeping experience and what you see. Though I do agree there are not a ton of discus keepers, either on YouTube, Facebook, or the forums. I do think there's enough of a population to where this fish is appreciated. And I really do think there's a lot of people out there who do appreciate a good discus tank. So this third comment I want to address is from Sean, talking about shell dwellers. Because this is one where I really struggled because I did have Lake Tanganyikan cichlids originally on my list because there are some Lake Tanganyikan cichlids that are very popular and very much appreciated, like some of the more common shell dweller species, as well as species like Frontosa and Trophius. But Sean does have a very good point here because there are plenty of shell dweller species that are out there in the aquarium hobby that no one really keeps and are definitely worth looking into if you're into Lake Tanganyikan cichlids. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at some of these more underappreciated fish and would maybe consider keeping some of them in your own aquariums here in the near future. So with that being said, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.